Neanderthals are extinct because our ancestors were riddled with disease. A CIA-backed artificial intelligence company will soon spy on Wall Street traders. And two prominent rabbis say a day is coming when Christians and Muslims will learn Torah. This is Skywatch TV for Thursday, April 28th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, Iran may send Hamas to fight ISIS. Now, even though Hamas is a Sunni group, and Iran, of course, is ruled by the Shia Ayatollahs, Iran may deploy Hamas operatives to fight the Islamic State in the Iraqi city of Mosul. They'd also reportedly help Iran take back Kirkuk, another city in the oil-rich region of northern Iraq. Kirkuk is under the control of the Kurds. This would mean that, if true, uh, Iran has a great deal of control over the Palestinian organization, and um, Hamas would be fighting in Mosul alongside Shias, like the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, Hezbollah, and Shiite militias. We keep an eye on that development. Now, speaking of Hamas, how's this for training up your children in the way they should go? Video showing Palestinian children in the Gaza Strip putting on a play in which they act out murdering Israelis part of a cultural festival in the Gaza Strip. The play was broadcast by a Hamas television channel in Gaza and the West Bank. And meanwhile, Israel is checking out the possibility that an ISIS affiliate has chemical weapons just across the Syrian border. Israel checking out evidence that the Yarmouk Martyrs Brigade in the southern Golan Heights might have gotten hold of some of Syria's chemical weapons. Israeli government also concerned by reported chemical attacks by ISIS in eastern Syria and western Iraq. The United States withdrew troops from the Sinai Peninsula last, last weekend. They were part of a peacekeeping group. Uh, this is reportedly in retaliation for Egypt's transfer of a pair of islands at the south end of the Red Sea to Saudi Arabia. The move came after the Obama administration protested to Egypt's President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi that the Pentagon hasn't been in the loop with the Egyptians, Saudis, and Israelis regarding security in the Red Sea. On the other hand, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Israel haven't been too happy that American withdrawal of naval and air forces from the region over the last few years have allowed the uh, Iranian Navy to begin deploying ships in the Red Sea. An artificial intelligence company backed by the CIA is partnering with a Swiss bank to spy on Wall Street. Palantir, which is named for the uh, crystal ball, the seeing stones from the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy, through which uh, Sauron could keep his um, big flaming eye on everything happening in Middle Earth. Um, Palantir, partnering with Credit Suisse to launch a trader surveillance program called Signac, supposed to catch rogue traders in illegal activity. Now, Palantir is an interesting company. It was co-founded by Peter Thiel, who was the co-founder of PayPal, billionaire investor in uh, tech companies. He, he was an early investor in Facebook, and he's also a leader in the transhumanist movement. Now, Palantir has been around since 2004. He's developed, it has developed relationships with the CIA, the U.S. government through the CIA, Homeland Security, National Security Agency, FBI, the CDC, the Marine Corps, Air Force, Special Operations Command, and other organizations. What it does is data mining. Palantir has developed a proprietary data mining system, which is what attracted the attention of the CIA in the first place. See, the CIA invested in Palantir early on through its uh, venture capital company. Uh, yes, the CIA has its own venture capital firm called InQtel, which invests in technologies that it believes will benefit the intelligence community within 18 months. So I report this story because I'm less interested in what Palantir is going to find on Wall Street and more interested in learning what the CIA, NSA, FBI, and Homeland Security are doing with Palantir's data mining technology. And speaking of tech, hackers are using a popular navigation app to create fake traffic jams. Waze, which is a, a popular app developed in Israel, purchased by Google a couple of years ago, saved me some time on a couple of cross-country drives. But it has a vulnerability that hackers have figured out how to exploit. They can locate Waze users on the system and then flood the system with fake traffic in order to convince Waze users that their preferred route to getting from point A to point B is blocked and starts diverting traffic onto secondary roads. This can be a security problem. 
if hackers tied to a terror group were to exploit this vulnerability in ways and divert traffic onto secondary roads where they're planning an attack, it could do two things. Number one, draw more people to the scene of the attack, but also create a fake traffic jam, thereby causing a real traffic jam on secondary roads leading to the scene of an attack, thereby preventing first responders from getting to the scene and providing aid. In a tragic story from Silicon Valley, Wednesday morning, a man was found dead in a conference room at Apple's headquarters, pronounced dead at the scene, apparently a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police have confirmed that the man was an Apple employee. The leader of Scientology threatening to sue his father, David Miscavige, who took over the cult from L. Ron Hubbard when uh, Mr. Hubbard suddenly went face to face with the truth, as in the truth, the way, and the life. Uh, Mr. Hubbard now knows the true nature of reality. Uh, Ron Miscavige, David's father, is about to release his book in the UK, the book called Ruthless, Scientology, My Son, David Miscavige, and Me. David's lawyers are promising a defamation suit if the book is released next week as promised. Somehow I think uh, the elder Mr. Miscavige expected this. Um, The book is already available in the United States. It was released in 2013, but it hasn't been available in the United Kingdom yet because their libel laws are more favorable to plaintiffs. A new study spanning half a century finds that spanking, spanking doesn't work. Researchers from the University of Texas and University of Michigan looked at 75 studies involving 150,000 children over 50 years. They claim that the research shows the children who were spanked were more likely to defy, defy their parents, more likely to be aggressive and antisocial. From my perspective, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe children who are most likely to defy their parents just get spanked more often. Spanking sure worked on me, but just my opinion, spanking alone is not the answer. In my personal experience, it's more the fear of losing the approval of your parents. And of course, that implies that the parents are loving parents. And I don't know how you quantify that kind of a variable into this type of study. Two prominent rabbis in Israel say they believe Christians and Muslims will soon come to Torah in the days of Messiah, which they believe are imminent. I keep an eye on news like this because I don't have a firm understanding of how much influence these rabbis have over Israeli society. That's why I asked Avi Lipkin when he was here in studio about this. And of course, he believes that uh, Israeli culture, society is becoming more religious as we here in the United States are becoming post Christian, or actually more pagan rather than more secular. Uh, Israel, uh, sadly, uh, is, is guided by men whose religion blinds them to the Messiah who revealed himself 2,000 years ago. Rabbi Moshe Sternbuch, who's vice president of the rabbinical court, and Rabbi Kayim Kanievsky, who I've mentioned here before, he's been publicly proclaiming for some time now that uh, Messiah's arrival is imminent, uh, met at Rabbi Kanievsky's home recently. This was a significant event for Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox Jews. Uh, Rabbi Sternbuch said, the troubles facing the Jews today is proof that we are in the end of days and that Messiah's return is soon. Rabbi Kanievsky said that Messiah will arrive in the very near future. In fact, quoting the Talmud, he said that it would happen in the year after Shemitah, which is the year we are in right now, ending in September. Now, Rabbi Sternbuch believes that Messiah should have already appeared if he was due to arrive in the year after Shemitah, uh, quoting Maimonides, 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 or Rambam, a very prominent, to this day, very prominent 12th century rabbinical scholar, uh, wrote that uh, Christians and Ishmaelites, Arabs, would come to Israel before Messiah's arrival. Now, Rabbi Kanievsky replied that when when Messiah comes, everyone will repent, and those who didn't bear fruit, Christians and Muslims, will bear fruit and learn Torah. Now, these men are unquestionably brilliant scholars who've devoted their lives to studying Torah and rabbinical teachings over the centuries. But as Avi Lipkin pointed out, they have blinders on. They don't study what other religions believe. And I agree that they do have blinders on, and that really applies on multiple levels. But from a Christian perspective, I would just add this, that we know from the teachings of Jesus Christ, repeated by his apostles, that 
loving God with all of our heart, soul, and mind and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves fulfills all of the law. Fulfills all of the law. Scripture says so explicitly in the New Testament. So with all due respect to the learned rabbis, we Christians know a little bit more about the Torah than you think. Back to science, researchers think they know why the Neanderthals went extinct. It's because our ancestors killed them with diseases. They believe humans migrating out of Africa were reservoirs of tropical diseases that just overwhelmed the, uh, uh, the defenses of the uh, Neanderthals who dominated Europe and Asia for thousands of years. Again, that's the official story. Now, there is another explanation uh, other than tropical tapeworms, tuberculosis, uh, different types of herpes and so forth, uh, which is that the classification of Neanderthal is an artificial one imposed by paleontologists. A study in 2004 by a prominent paleontologist from the University of Adelaide in Australia of the 200 existing pre-human skeletons, and I was shocked to find out that there were only 200, showed that the dimensions of these pre-humans or hominins all fall within a standard deviation along a bell curve, standard deviation for Homo sapiens. In other words, they're all the same species, all Homo sapiens. Now that said, science does have its uses. Uh, statistic statisticians have uh, developed a formula to calculate the sock loss index. Yes, a formula that accounts for the factors involved in determining the probability of winding up with odd socks in your laundry. The factors include volume of laundry, number of people in the household, and number of socks in a load. Now, of course, there are other factors that aren't accounted for, such as how one determines whether socks are mismatched. Speaking for myself per personally, once I switched to going by thickness, no problem. Skywatch TV is moving to print. We're launching Skywatch TV magazine, and that is the subject of this week's program on Skywatch TV, the launch of Skywatch TV magazine, which will be available as of July. There's a special offer involved if you are an early subscriber during the first 60-day period, which ends June 24th. Special deal that we'll tell you about at the end of this program. But that is the program. Tom Horn also talking about a new book from Defender Publishing that he's very excited about, which uh, I think you'll want for your own collection. This will be available for sale on its own after the initial 60-day uh, subscription period for Skywatch TV magazine. I predict what 12 global experts believe you will see by 2025, and you will see this program Saturday on the Victory Television Network in Arkansas and around Memphis, and again coast-to-coast -coast on the Christian Television Network. Of course, the program is available now on our Roku channel. And in fact, if you're a Roku subscriber, if you have a Roku box at home and you haven't yet added the Skywatch TV channel to your account, please do so because you get first look at the weekly Skywatch TV program before our broadcast partners do. Log on to skywatchtv.com slash Roku for complete instructions. Speaking of video, you can bring the Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference to your living room or wherever you access the internet. The, pro the conference is sold out, but the streaming video will feature all 32 of the speakers at least once. Those videos available in re real time and then again for six weeks after, they will be archived. So you can go back and watch them again or watch all of them at your convenience over the six weeks. For information and to sign up, log on to prophecywatchers.com. Your support is critical to us at Skywatch TV. For your gift of $20 or more during the month of April, you'll receive an audiobook edition of Tom and Nita Horn's exciting supernatural thriller, The Araman Gate, and this beautiful, amazing grace glass block paperweight. We'll send that out to you as our way of thanking you for your gift of $20 or more during the month of April. Log on to skywatchtv.com slash donate. And of course, your mouse finger can also be a great help to us. When you find us online at Facebook, Twitter, or if you're watching us on YouTube, click like, click share, and especially click subscribe. And if you're curious about what I put up on the internet when I get inspired, you'll find it here. Twitter, Facebook, my website, and my email address for your comments, questions, and suggestions, dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. Tomorrow, my favorite day of the week, not because it leads into the weekend, but because 
I get to talk to my favorite person in the world. My best friend, Sharon Gilbert, joins me for Sci Friday tomorrow. Until then, thanks for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. Save nearly half off the cover price when you subscribe now to the brand new Skywatch TV magazine. For a limited time, from April 24th through June 24th, 60 days only, a five-year subscription to Skywatch TV magazine is just $99. That's more than $75 off the cover price, which is like getting two years for free. Exclusive content, articles on prophecy, discovery in the supernatural from Tom Horn, Chris Putnam, Josh Peck, science updates from Sharon K. Gilbert, geopolitics from yours truly, and guest writers like Pulitzer Prize nominated journalist Troy Anderson, renowned Bible scholar Dr. Michael Heiser, Pentagon advisor Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis, and more. But there is more. As an early subscriber, you'll be the first to get this new book from Defender Publishing, I Predict What 12 Global Experts Believe You'll See by 2025. This is a $20 value and includes best-selling authors like Joel Richardson, Mark Biltz, Carl Gallops, Tom Horn, Paul McGuire, and more. Find out what they think about the coming war between ISIS and the Vatican, the future of the Temple Mount, and the Ark of the Covenant a worldwide manifestation of angels and the coming age of human hybrids. And we'll also add this DVD, the best of Skywatch TV 2015, a $25 value, including our most compelling interviews from last year, including Chuck Missler, Steve Quayle, the discussion of the Georgia Guidestones with Chris Pinto, and more. All of this together worth more than $200, yours now for just $99, but only through June 24th. Subscribe now, Skywatch TV Magazine. Just call the number on your screen or log on to skywatchtvstore.com.